Hey, seniors. Uh, I just wanted to uh, take a few minutes and talk about what we're doing this week. So if you've been in class and you're going to be in class on Thursday for the rest of you, uh, you'll know that we're going to go out and we do at the greenhouse, do this. I think it's a pretty cool lab, right? And the whole point of that lab is to understand the basics of Darcy's law, which allows us to characterize the material within an aquifer and how the water flows through an aquifer and anything the water is taking with it, including contaminants like bacterial things like cholera or chemicals and so forth. Next week, we'll get into what happens when you pump that water out of the ground <clears throat> and how that affects uh, the discharge and the movement of materials. For now, though, um, we're just going to talk about the basics of how groundwater, groundwater moves. If you look at the screen here, this is our Schoology page. I'm going to go ahead and click on groundwater, starting with October 27th, which was uh, actually should be October 26th. Um, there's, a, there's, there's only three things here. I do please, for Thursday, folks, please read up on the stuff that we need to look at. So look at the basic materials before coming to class. That's always best. Uh, it makes makes your time in class a whole lot more productive and, and, and uh, useful to you. Uh, and then I would go ahead, and I have these things in order on purpose. I really would prefer that you go ahead and do this exploration of porosity and permeability. Um, this gives you a, a basic understanding of uh, what it is for a material to be porous. Think of a sponge. It has a lot of empty space in it, but then the rest of it is filled with something, right? So you're looking at the amount of pore space. Actually, you're looking at the amount of the sponge material divided by the total volume, which gives you the porosity. That's how much empty space there is. But if those empty spaces aren't connected, water doesn't flow, and that's permeability. So we want to understand the difference between those two things. They're really important because they play into other than into critical pieces of Darcy's Law. If you look at the Darcy's Law material here, though, <clears throat> okay, there's some basic information here as well. Um, what you're going to be doing is 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 basically addressing questions that are in this worksheet here. Uh, and there's you know there's basic things like that. What is an aquifer, so forth. There's the experiment itself, which we're doing in class. Uh, we'll get to the spreadsheet in a moment. And then you're going to be answering some questions. You're going to need to plot some graphs uh, of this is the this uh, Q over A is discharge over area. On one axis, so you'll have to you may have to calculate that um, versus the, the gradient essentially dH over dL, and you're going to look at the gradient and how the gradient as a function of, or I should say, actually the discharge and over discharge uh, divided by square uh, by by area as a function of the, the gradient, um, <coughs> excuse me, affects the flow of water through the aquifer, and so you're going to look at Darcy's actual some of Darcy's actual data, uh, but then you're also going to compare your own data to that, okay? And that's where the spreadsheet becomes very, very useful. This is all about related rates, guys, too. I mean, if you're if you're talking about pouring water into a into an aquifer or water moving through an aquifer and you're pumping it out or you're extracting somehow, that these are these are all related rate questions, and especially next week we'll get into that again. So you talk about that in calculus right now. Um, this is a this is just an image you're going to need to have access to. Uh, this freeze and cherry thing, and it looks like this. Uh, oop, let me pull it in th into the right browser here. Uh, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. If I put that in the right browser there, um, this diagram shows you in rocks. You know, water does flow through rock, believe it or not. Uh, there's pore spaces in rocks. It doesn't flow fast, but it flows through rocks. Um, and you can see the different kinds of rocks and how they're what we call hydraulic, hydraulic conductivity or permeability um, compared to one another. Some things like fractured bedrock, like that are over here, when you when it's flowing primarily through the fractures, have very high conductivities. Likewise, in unconsolidated sediments that are not yet rock, they're just sediments, uh, there's different hydraulic conductivities or permeability. So water is moving through these materials at different velocities, depending on the pore space and the connectedness of the pores. Okay, Pore space, big porosity, connectedness, big permeability. And then, of course, gravity, pushing it, hydraulic head, and so forth. So the column we're interested in is this K column with meters per second. All right. And you're going to be comparing your data in the spreadsheet. You know, this, this sort of a, this is a, this is quality control, if you will. So this is one of those, you got like a, a standard set of tables out of a, out of a, out of a, out of a scientific um, textbook of some sort. Uh, this, these values should compare favorably to the ones you actually experimentally get in class. And so if we look at the spreadsheet, uh, which is actually I already had open, but you're going to be looking at several different aquifers. That's these over here, the little PVC tubes, uh, which 
this isn't really accurate anymore. This is actually uh, more like pea gravel. Um, it's actually bone char, <laughs> as it turns out. Um, so what you do is you're going to be putting in a, a, a value. So let's say like some people had things that were, you know, with that they had it elevated so there was a half meter up. And when you're in class on Thursday, this will make sense for you seniors. Um, and eight, so this is the change in elevation over the dis over a distance. Okay. Uh, and that's what's going on here. So we've talked about Darcy's law in class and so forth. Um, but anyway, uh, this is the, this is the initial height. And then this is where the water is pouring into the beaker through the aquifer. Uh, this is the length of the tube. That's, and then these, these three numbers can be used. H2 minus H1 divided by the length of the tube gives you the gradient. All right, I'm not going to fill the rest of these in right now. Then um, we came up with some times, right? And so for gravel, a, a pea gravel, a typical time would say 350 seconds or 0 0.0189 cubic meters of water to pass through or to, to fill, um, to pass through that, that aquifer. So we're looking at, in class, you'll, you'll fill up a liter, the equivalent of a liter of, of water, um, through the aquifer and time how long that takes to happen. And when you do that, you're going to then extrapolate it out, multiply by 18.9 to get cubic meters. And so what happens here is this 350 seconds is the result of that multiplication. Uh, you get, of course, then you get the, the, the discharge and the hydraulic conductivity. This is uh, this is the equivalent of um, times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3. So if I compare that to the uh, the document that I had up, this one, 10 to the negative three is, is good for, say, a light gravel, a small gravel, right? Like a pea gravel. And so that actually works out really, really well. The other part are these bits over here that you have to, that you have to fill in. Um, this, this will make more sense as you go through, uh, this other activity over here, this one, as you go through that activity, this is asking you to do exactly the same thing. The volume of a grain of sediment in this case. These, this is, this is going to take some thinking. If you go with a pea gravel, let's say where each grain is maybe you decide three millimeters in diameter. Okay, what is the volume of a grain that's three, million, three millimeters in diameter, right? The volume of a grain, if we just assume it's a perfect sphere, which of course it's not, but we assume it is, three is pi r cubed right? So you're going to um, figure that out that way, okay? And then um, you have the volume of the tube. So if you, f if you know the volume of the tube and you now know the volume of a grain of sediment, you can figure out the number of grains. Boom, right? This divided by this gives you this. Um, and then actually, I'm sorry, this isn't pi r cubed. This is going to be s cubed. You take the diameter of a grain and assume it's a cube. That is just literally a cube. And um, then over here, it's going to be a sphere. Now, when you make go from something, and if you if you go from a cube into a sphere, and all the spheres are stacked with each other, then you open up all this pore space where the corners of the cubes used to be. That's your porosity. So you're trying to figure out what the total volume of sediment is in that cube, and the remainder is porosity. So if we say that these um, these sediment grains are point zero zero um, two cubic meters, uh, and then we say that there are 25,000 of these in there, and then we say that this is 0 0.001, um, and then the total volume of sediment ends up being, say, um, there's the volume of the cube over there, and it ends up being 0 0.002. My porosity is 74%, which means that 74% of, of the space inside of that tube and, and that aquifer is empty space. It doesn't have to be connected empty space. The permeability could be super low. It could just be one big op open hole inside the aquifer. That's not normal. Okay. Usually there's connected space. All right. But that's the kind of thing. Obviously, I just threw numbers in there. So don't pay attention to that. You'll have to calculate some things. But again, go to the little quiz first. It'll make more sense. Um, and then you can go back and answer all your questions, make your graphs and so forth, and write your little write the little report up okay so um from your your findings so that's that's basically what we're doing so again ask questions work with your partner on this guys you had a partner in class i said we set you up with somebody at your table work together on it you can turn it in together that's perfectly fine 
Okay. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Have fun, guys.